It is time to wake up now. Uh, wake up. Don't sleep your life away. Rise and shine. 6 a.m. and your hand can't make it to the alarm clock before the voices in your head start telling you that it's too early, too dark, and too cold to get out of bed. But you didn't ask their opinion. The voice you've chosen to listen to is one of defiance. A voice that says there was a reason you set that alarm in the first place. So sit up, put your feet on the floor, and don't look back because we've got work to do. Welcome to the grind. Go yourself. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. With lots of love and a hearty how you doing this morning, neighbor? It's the John and Gordy Show, only on Mad Radio 92.7 WMDX. Take it away, boys. Another great, fantastic morning. Mad Radio, WMDX, 92.7 FM and 1580 AM. And if you're just happening to catch a little audio in the background, we are, uh, we normally just broadcast from uh, Short Stack. Now we are in the kitchen. Uh, we are helping out. Uh, just uh, oh, they need dishwasher. Dry. It's a, it's a scrubber. I'm getting soaked what? with this thing. What? The sprayer oh, is we're just on all, here. all over oh, the place. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're Short Snack Eatery, 301 yes. West Johnson Street. We'll be here all morning till 8 a.m. And uh, Kath Lake is joining us this morning, as well as uh, later on, we'll have a special guest, John Kavalik, is going to stop. John, John's right? going to be here, the cartoonist, yeah. uh, former columnist, uh, millionaire guy who has okay. a very, very popular game. Stop telling he's a millionaire. It's just unfair. You don't think that's. I don't know if it's right. It just seems wrong. Well, we're all envious. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know, we started his career basically. We, did. we, we, we kept him many going. years ago. You we start all these guys. All yeah. these, we, we get them on the air, and then they do great things, and then we never hear from them. Right? Again. They just forget about, about us. <laughs> giving them that platform. Well, it's only been thirty years since you last saw him. Yeah, well, it could be. Uh, I mean, that's a long, it's been a long time hand since we touched base with each other. But I'm sure that you know he's uh, he's very successful and happy. Apples to apples, and, and we're made so. <laughs> we're working in the kitchen at short step. <laughs> it's all relative. It's all good. It you does. know, it's good work. But it, I, and, I feel uh, good about it. Yeah. You know, back at the blue collar job that I had way back when I first started. Yes, <laughs> it's full circle. Yeah, it's it all does. good. I love. And it's well, 44 degrees. Brother man, 44 degrees. Is that what you're... That's what mine says. It's really? Right. It was a yeah. hard oh. walk. Okay. From across the isthmus. I, I'm 36, but that's... Oh, your, if you, you, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really? way too cold. That's correct. That's we'll go with that. Uh, 64 is the expected high today. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe the temperature is jumping up quickly already this it morning. Is. Yes. Yeah. But... Uh, do we all have to rely on my watch? Yeah, let's, let's uh, forty-three degrees. Well, okay, well, I, I, I Maybe that, you things got change at the top, top of the hour. Temperatures. Okay. Hey, hey, I'm not you? a weatherman anymore. You know, that's why I turned in my badge many years See? ago. See, he's hyperventilating. <sighs> yeah. It's the 13th day of March. It's Wednesday. It, for it is. It is. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah, we got a Was lot of stuff. Was that a McDonald's special? To let you have yes. You could just... Okay, what is it today? Mm -hmm. Is it Jewel going on today? Good Samaritan Day, Open Umbrella Indoors Day, God. Ear Muff Day, <laughs> Registered, <laughs> Registered Dietitian Nutritionist oh, Day, so <laughs> or Penny Loafers Day? Penny Which Loafers one of those? Day. It's not that. You are correct, sir. Ding, 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 ding. That's okay. too easy. He threw it in at the yeah, end. Yeah, we don't even care rest. anymore. Oh. Okay. It seems that like is. it seems like I would know, right? I, I make it sound very confident. Yes. Yeah. But I, I'm just taking a shot, and that's it. Just to no run insights. All of these <laughs> and days. No prizes except Let's I'll get just, you coffee. Let's just pick that's one right. or two of these that interest us. How about National Dermatologist? 
Interesting. Are they? I yes. see a dermatologist every year, except this year because I've been too busy. But okay. you have to go every year but if they're you can. Too, they're too busy. You never. Oh, get, I know. You're never, never able to get in. No. This is a day that we honor board certified dermatologists. You know, that's they got to be board certified. Yeah. If they're not board certified, they're, they're just not real dermat. Yeah, they're just making it up. <laughs> um, Strip down. Let me take a look. Get this. Get this. They're saviors of our skin. Our yes, largest they organ. Are. Did you? You know your skin is your largest, largest organ, organ and, mm. they, and they get the same period of time to get it diagnosed. Oh You're such a right? complainer. It's Make a, an appointment. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. No, it takes so long. You, if you get a spot on your skin, you're sitting there oh, freaking out, thinking, yeah. oh, this is cancer, this is some Emergency kind of melanoma, ones, yes. and then you, you want to see them, and they don't schedule you right away. Uh -huh. okay. So I have it annually, so I just wait. I just put it in the calendar that's a year nice. from that's now. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. But if I yeah. get something scary looking, yeah, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a panic thing. All right. <laughs> of course, your doctor will see you immediately and then schedule a yes. four dermatologists if it's serious. Yes, if it's serious, they will. Yes. It's national There's jewel. There's a way around that. It's <laughs> national jewel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. You have to Sam, say you've that got right. a, You've got a song for that, right? Um, jewel, let's jewel, see. jewel Day? Yes. The day is, is also there really is, huh? recognizes precious and semi-precious story. Uh, Stones. The Stones. Yeah. yeah. Get those my glasses gla on your nose just the right oh, way. Lord. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lucy in the Sky Do with not. Diamonds. Never mind. Okay. Do not even. Oh, my you God. You know what? It's one of my biggest pet peeves, though, when I hear what? an ad for a jewelry store. Yeah. Yeah. They say it in, in a very unreal way. They go, jewelry. Oh, they do? Yes. All jewelry. They make sure that uh, second E All the syllables. Yes, pronounced. jewel. Yeah. Jewelry. And it's like, don't we just say jewelry? I thought you were going to say jewelry. that the ads usually make it sound like women only live for diamonds. Oh, and yeah, right. And <laughs> I, I, our best I, I, men have, uh, have stopped that little tradition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> National Open an Umbrella Indoors it's like Day. Valentine's Day, you know, just make it up. Why would we have a day to open an umbrella? Yeah. Indoors? Indoors. Yeah. Because that's bad luck. Is it? The Theoretically. Is it really? Yeah, well, what yes. is that all about? Well, attention to whether or not you for any bad luck. See? That's a scientific experiment. Are they asking the National for our employer? They just getting make their up, data. They just make uh, this crap up, you know? And you're proliferating it. Well, I know. But We've got to do something to get warmed up here. Are people to find out if they open an umbrella and what happened for that day? Is there some kind of research project going on? Because uh, I've never been called. Apparently. No. I've never reported any problems and never actually put an umbrella well, indoors. Well, there you go. So you have no data. It's actually uh, also... Why would they call you? <laughs> there you're, right. you're right. They knew. <laughs> it's National Earmuff Day. Earmuff Day. Recognizes the creation of the protection that keeps... Invented the earmuffs Can way back you, when. I saw in the grocery store not mm -hmm. one but two young women, college students presumably, in the grocery store wearing headphones like these yeah. with their phones. Noise canceling. They went out into the world like, I yes. don't want to hear anything I've seen anybody that a has lot. to say. I've They're wearing that. full size headphones right. these days. And that should keep your ears warm. It well. keeps your ears warm, I'm yeah. saying. So there you go. Oh. It was invented, <laughs> the earmuffs were invented by a 15 year old kid back in uh, March 13th of 1877. Get out. 15 year old Chester. Uh, where's Chester's That's last name? That's a great idea, kid. You know, he's uh, probably not listening. You don't probably need his. <laughs> Last name. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, how long Chester ago Greenwood. Okay. Chester Greenwood. Yeah. 15 years old. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, just shiny object. Oh, yeah. No, just <laughs> roll. Guy got this little what mini happened? bike. He's driving down the street it's in a little mini bike, and it's it. lit up with Christmas lights. With, with a lot of LEDs. It's just maybe he tore it off one of the trees. <laughs> cool <laughs> enough. And he's I don't trying, see him. He's on trying the, to escape while the lights are flickering. He's trying and, not to be hit by a bus, is what he's trying to do. Yeah, because hey, Sam, you've got the uh, history. Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let's take a look at the today. And today in history. Sorry. Today. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> today, oh, you're cutting in and out. I Sam. know you we guys are a little bit as well. But let's yeah. take a look at the the history okay. books today. Go ahead. Today in eighteen or seventeen eighty one, rather. The first planet discovered since antiquity, Uranus, was discovered. Awesome. This is great radio. So well. Yes. Sam, uh, you're Sam, cutting we, in and out. We cannot hear you, so we're just uh, going to move up. 
move forward. All righty. Okay? All righty. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Overnight. Okay, so now the Supreme Court, our, this is ridiculous. Every time we talk about the Supreme Court now, it's the liberal Supreme Court. We never said that about the Supreme Court when they were dominated by conservatives and Republicans. You're talking about the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Yes, now. yes. but now it's, oh, it's the liberal Supreme Court. Right, yes. But anyway, the Supreme Court now has approved taking up the issue of absentee drop boxes. Remember when the Republican Supreme Court decided that drop boxes were just a really bad thing? Yeah, they, they, yeah, they didn't like them at all. They wanted to get rid of them. They, you know, all kinds of things could happen. Oh, and, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it was the downfall of society. You know, if you just put one up on a post someplace, uh, they right. were they were tamper proof. They were put up by by the election uh, facilities in your community, right. and they were very very protected and very, very solid. And yet, for some, uh, oh, no, you can't have them. That was legislation from the bench. Right. There was no law saying you couldn't have it or you could have it. So sitting there saying, no, you can't have it, that's legislating from the bench as far as I can interpret. So what's, uh, so... Now it's okay? Now they're going to take a look at it. Uh, it's been <laughs> challenged. Uh, someone wants to see these drop boxes uh, uh, made legal again, mm -hmm. and so it's it's in the courts. Well, good. We'll see what happens with that. Right? I like that. Yeah, I well, it was, it was very, very convenient for ab absentee The words voters. right out of my mouth. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> convenient. <laughs> they should have them at convenience All stores. Right. They're so convenient. There you go. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? You know, the big thing was they wanted them right next to uh, uh, the elect uh, the poll. They they wanted right. ne next to the city hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we've got to take a break. Well, we're coming up on All a break. Right. Yeah. Yeah, in uh, just a few seconds here. We are live at Short Stack Eatery. It's at 301 West Johnson Street, right downtown Madison, the corner of Johnson and State. John and Gordy, along Catherine Lake. A little bit later on, John Cavallo. We're coming right back. WMDX 92.7 FM at 1580 AM. It's the John and Gordy Show. You can give us a call, 608-879-8255 or 879-TALK. Or go on your uh, civic media app and can contact us that way. Uh, call us or text us, and we'll take your calls. If you want to get in on the program, mm -hmm. Catherine Lake is with us this morning, and uh, she's gotten the coffee for us. We, we didn't. We didn't want to, you know, make any, uh, you know, like some kind of gender thing about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. I needed to get up. But you needed to get up. <laughs> well, she's our executive producer today here that's on that site, on site executive okay. producer Fantastic. and director of programming. Uh -huh. So you gave so, her a title and she feels better about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got coffee for John. Thank you very much. Uh, 
I you said so. you were good. Of course, you have your own. Yeah, I, I got uh, a little bit left. That yeah, purple okay. cup is yours, oh, but thank I can you. refill that. No, if you no, pr- okay. it's fine. They're giving you it's the good. devil eye for bringing it in really your own coffee at a restaurant. This is you. not well, good. I was here, you know, setting up well, 45 minutes before you guys arrived, <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. Wow. I don't mind. Wow. I'm happy to Mom do it. Mom and Dad are arguing. I'm getting uncomfortable. A lot of bitterness. <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of restaurant talk, yeah. because we're here at Short Stack Eatery. We love being here. This is our yeah. third time oh, yeah. here. Uh, everybody is great to us here, and we appreciate Alex and uh, also uh, Sinead and everybody here. Uh, but uh, I heard uh, this was breaking news yesterday. You remember mm-hmm. we were talking uh, about a couple of months ago about Lane's Bakery closing down? Yes. They had been there for years. Decades, yeah. like 40 years, something crazy. It was really horrible to see them go away. It was, and it was family operation. It was very sad because mm-hmm. everybody loved Lane's Bakery, but it was time for them to shut it down. Uh, there's a new uh, restaurant going to go in there, Tequila Los Atlantis. Now, I understand they already have a couple of locations. They've been around oh, Madison okay. for quite a oh, while. But they're, sure. uh, they're going to get the approval today from the Madison Community Development Authority, it looks like. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be opening up uh, a new location there, right where Lane's Bakery Say used that to be. Name so one more time, good. Mr. Spanish speaker. It's Akira Los Atlantes. <laughs> nice. Thank so you very much. Akira, what, is, what does that mean? My sister's over there. What does Akira Los Atlantes mean? Lost Atlantis. Lost? I, I don't know, but. Takira, what is Takira? It, it's she owned, can't even hear me. She's <laughs> all the way across the room. It's owned by the Philippe Falcone family. And uh, so it's a great family operation. I'm glad that they've got that location going, and they're very happy to be there because that's uh, in an area that has a pretty high uh, population of Hispanic uh, community, that, that part of Park Street. Well, that's true. So that's uh, great. But, yeah, yeah. but the thing well, is, the what are they, is wonderful. So what are, what's that area going to do now about not having any donuts well, accessible? I mean, that's right? a tragedy. Uh, isn't, that the, isn't that the donut, point? Donut. That is the point of life. <laughs> Donuts nearby. Donut. you got to have a donut every once in a while. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right down the street. <laughs> they have a location on Raymond Road and also uh, somewhere else on the southwest side. Oh, at the Meadowood Shopping Center. Oh, so good, good for them. Nice. Yeah, we're glad that they that Expanding. location. It's a That's a great location. It is. Yeah. It is. So anyway. All right. All right. Well, back uh, let you, let, let's get back to uh, the latest breaking news. Oh, that's right. That's out there. Uh, the Senate, before they left for vacation to run for office, there's so many things to brag about. Uh, <laughs> the Senate fired eight Democratic appointees uh, by Governor Evers, and that included two UW regents. Yeah. Uh, and one of those regents just happens to be a former uh, representative, a how you know, assembly person. <laughs> and now he's thinking, well, if you're going to fire me here, I think I'm going to run for office again. <gasps> mm-hmm. Is he doing that? And, and yes. Oh, okay. It, yes, that that is probably going to happen. Name names. Uh, what's that? Name names. I don't have the names. Oh, darn. No, I just, I, I just printed these out really quick. These are wow. late-breaking stories. Late-breaking. But uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, you, you know, eight Democratic appointees fired. Uh, these two UW regents fired. The problem here is, and we're seeing this, Republicans don't really want representation. You know, the other side. They don't want the other side to be represented in government at all. They're just cleaning them out. They're taking they care of They keep firing them. people. They, they, do, they don't want any uh, woke individuals, which is another word for liberal or progressive individuals. They're, they're clearing them out. And they keep clearing them out, and Evers keeps putting new people in the place. <laughs> right? And then they clear those people out. <laughs> And I'm wondering where Evers is getting people to do this. There's an endless supply <laughs> I know. of wokes. It's like, well, you'll be in office maybe, you know, doing this for us, maybe for five months, six months, and they'll be back and they'll we'll fire you. We'll put you at the bottom of the list again, and you'll come back, bubble back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, why can't they reappoint these people, right? Just put them back in. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You yeah. know, just If they're going to keep doing this and being very partisan and not wanting represent- fair representation in this state, mm. then let's just keep recycling the same people over and over. Why not? I think it's a great idea. That, that's yeah. her idea. Yeah. Catherine came up with that. Uh, thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs> we appreciate Solve that. all the problems. Did you hear about the news uh, overnight of Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Remember Aaron Rodgers? Yes, I, he I was do. a big deal He's here a big in Wisconsin. Pot. 
yeah, for a little while. I'm yeah. Not quite sure. He's going to be vice president someday. What are you talking about? What are you <laughs> yes. going on about? Well, what? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., remember yes. him? He's still running for president. He, he started is? as a Democrat, then he went independent. You know, he's oh, about 13% right. right. in the polls. Uh, oh, one poll I saw. Yeah. Foil. Yes. Well, he's suggesting that he has talked to Aaron Rodgers about being his running mate, and Aaron Rodgers is uh, interested in that. Now, Aaron Rodgers, he, he's, he's kind of busy. He's, he's not a political guy. <laughs> he all. broke he's, his whatever, his ankle or something. Yeah, what, something what, like he that. He tore his Achilles he, he's, tendon. He's on the mend, and he'll come back to uh, play for the Jets. Yes. Well, well, well what, wait, wait. How can he be VP candidate even, let alone VP, if he's on the field? That's a great question. Okay, I'm just asking. Why well, I think maybe one why not? two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you have two jobs. You he's have got two jobs. plenty of money. Jobs. He doesn't need the money. You know, he's not doing it for that. The vice presidency doesn't pay what uh, being quarterback to the New York Jets pays. It's, 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 it's so. just a shot, but I don't think he's going to take the job. But or the guess what? For that There's matter. also another candidate that uh, Robert F. Ken F. Kennedy Jr. has brought to the table. That's Jesse the Body Ventura, oh, yes. former wrestler. God. So it's between, <laughs> it's between well, Aaron Rodgers. He had a job that was in Jesse. politics, but what has he been doing lately? I don't know. I Jesse. thought he was dead. Corey yeah. <laughs> thought he was dead. Oh, I no. he died yeah, years ago, oh. but apparently he's He's not dead. At, at the, this point, right? Yeah. They propped him up. So we'll see what happens with that. But I that's, you know, that's, that man. yes. Jesse the Body Ventura is in the running for vice president for Robert F. Kennedy <laughs> Jr. So is Aaron Rodgers. Now, I can't wait to hear, because, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he's got. Uh, Kind, kind of gotten political the last few years well, he has. with his anti-vax exactly. stand, oh. and that lines up kind of with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And you know, so, they, they have some controversial ideas. So they, well, the, the upshot is right. He's got 13 percent, yes. presuming of 100, and the other two are going to split. The other two being, of course, Biden and Trump. Who is who is Robert F. Kennedy going to take from? It's Trump. looking uh, well. He'll uh, take from Trump. Well, it's not what the polls are no. saying, unfortunately. He's no, not a Kennedy. They're, Stop they're, being I, fooled. Yeah, there's some Democrats that really no. are leaning, yeah, yeah, in That's that direction. Right. So kind of, kind of a protest. It could be a spoiler. Nobody yeah. in Madison because would. Because of the no, uh, I don't think so. Not in Madison, but no. the conflict on Gaza, I, I believe, is really affecting Biden awfully, and and this this whole thing about getting anti-vaxxers in as a party is not going to work. That's right. And we'll, we'll be interested to see what the blowback here in Wisconsin about Aaron Rodgers uh, possibly being vice president candidate. <laughs> that should be interesting. Ridiculous. It's 29 past the hour. We've got news and sports and Pam Yonke with a farm report. And then we're coming back live from a short snack eatery, downtown Madison. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Liquid Lawyer, the product to turn to when your liquid plumber overcharges you. <laughs> it's perfect. Wow. That's a, like a, a rolling laugh kind of joke as you really start to get it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We are live at Short Stack Eatery this morning, John and Gordy and Catherine Lake. And Catherine brought her sister along here. I yeah. did. Sherry, yeah. has, she, has she ever seen you actually uh, broadcast from anywhere? No, she doesn't anytime? give it. She really? doesn't give anything from it. But, you know, no. <laughs> she doesn't care. I go to her concerts all the time, but does she come out here to watch me babble on the radio? Is, Absolutely is, not. Is she asleep right now? Yeah, I think she, she does. Could off you off nudge her a little bit? Give her yeah. a push. Give her a push. <laughs> you know, she's a really. world-class, like, oboist. Like, oh, first yes. chair. Oh, like, really? you know, as hot as you can go. Traveled all over the world playing yes. oboe. Yes. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, Somebody famous for, is in the restaurant like, with decades. Famous to other right oboe players, for yeah. sure. My, uh, I wonder my, if she could play this on the oboe. My brother. I'm a pancake. My I'm brother. a pancake. Oh. Do, 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 I'm a pancake. I'm a pancake. I'm a pancake. Do, 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 I'm a pancake. Uh, it's their favorite song here at Short Stack Eatery. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. I'm a pancake. I wish okay. you'd come up with harmony for this. Yeah, you think so? sing along. I'm a pancake. Oh, my God. You know, it's really difficult. I, I learned a lot about the oboe a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they they make their own reeds. Yes. They, uh, how that works. Yeah. And it's a really fine art to do that. It's and very takes different. a lot uh, of practice to do It's not do like that. a clarinet. 
Don't call it a clarinet. Because clarinets a clarinet. have a very simple read. You pick them up at Walgreens, pull them out of a box. Oboists, <laughs> Walgreens oboists <laughs> have to make Didn't them from that. scratch with bamboo. Really? From wow. southern France. I kid you not. That is literally what they do. And they use special knives wow. and everything. I mean, uh, Sherry showed us a, a little kit that she carries yeah. around with her. Looks like a serial killer's kit. It does. It does. It's a surgical and she kit. she gets through. I don't know how she gets them on the airplane. I yeah. don't understand. <laughs> she flies with these it knives. sounds like she trying. Trying to get a little sympathy for playing the oboe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very difficult instrument. Ah, you know. uh, my brother okay. played oboe. Did he really? Did he really? Yeah, and he played first chair. He was very, very proud. How his, long did he play? Uh, You're making this crap well, up. Really? How long did he play? Uh, I don't know, through high school and college. In college, and, too? Yeah, sure. He was in, a, in the orchestra. He was, he, like I said, he was first chair. He yeah. did pretty well. That's pretty, yeah. very good. Yeah. But they're making the reads, then. You know what it's like. I but yeah, I've been there. I've seen it. it. You've seen the strings on your parents' it's furniture? It's mind-numbing. Yeah, right. it is mind-numbing. Does he still play the oboe? No, no, he doesn't. Give it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. You have to be only Wait. interested in the oboe, Don't you nothing have, else. Don't you have to be in an orchestra to play oboe? Yes. No, not okay, necessarily. Well, could, not in an orchestra. Well, but yeah. You could certainly yeah. play it out Solo. on the patio or <laughs> quartets or, <laughs> you know, the you, there are smaller, uh, you know, configurations. Yeah. Quintets. Oh, yeah. It's quintets. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. Oh, quintets. A, we should oh, have an oboe oh, at a wedding. Yes. That would be very nice. Oh, it is. At funerals. She's played funerals, too. Huh? It's a very uh, forlorn ooh. instrument. Sure, like bring us down. You know, we're talking about I'm weddings. Sorry. Oh, oh I got something well, for you really now. Oh, tell us a story, you. Catherine. I got a, I got she a story for you. Right. Okay. A pallet of used batteries. Yes. Okay. Yes, I've seen those. Has re-entered Earth's atmosphere over hmm. the Gulf of Mexico. Oh. Wait a minute. Where did they come well, from? Because what we are disgusting. Humans are disgusting. It's not enough that we ruin our oceans. Right. We're ruining our orbit, too. So we, these are from Space this. is infinite. Just throw it out. Yes. The space station put a pallet of batteries, used batteries, out. Just toss it out. It, Why wouldn't they shoot it toward the sun? You know, there's a good idea. You know, let's ruin our <laughs> sun. Well, Brilliant idea. It's not gonna, I it's wish not you were ruin it. It's just a pallet. The sun is huge. I, I don't mean, know. The sun I can think absorb it, could it. Do something to it. <laughs> Didn't they like uh, in what, one of the Superman movies take a, all the nuclear weapons and shoot them into the sun? And sure. what happened? Did the Earth end but, in the movie? But Superman no, they threw them right, into the right. sun. Yeah, <laughs> yes. they did that to get we rid of the nukes. We don't know how to propel this well, pallet of batteries into that the sun. It's been tossed by the Canadom <laughs> robotic arm. Oh, no. In March of 21, this happened. They tossed it out. So it's been in our orbit, and now it's just coming in. Well, they, it'll burn up. Why would they it'll do burn that? up in the orbit. We don't have to send it into the sun. No, it's it'll coming burn down. Up as well. It's coming down. Yeah. It's not clear whether the entire pallet burned up upon reentry, oh or boy. if some parts of it survived the heat. But you know where it is? It's in the Gulf. Okay, Old Mexico. which is a good place. Yeah. All right, well, they can have it. I just thought it was fine. <laughs> it's minutes. And if you're a cruise Could ship, <laughs> just hopefully look out. didn't hit anybody. Look really, out. the only thing this science story served was to make us sound like idiots. Even <laughs> even NASA agrees that you're supposed to throw your used batteries in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you guys familiar That's with this? Isn't are really? you guys no. familiar no. with this meme? No. no. Oh yeah, it's a Me? it's a it's a joke um, that people take like ironically really seriously. Uh, you're supposed to throw your used car batteries into the ocean instead of taking them to AutoZone to exchange. It's a safe and perfectly legal thrill. <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's the that's joke. That's the joke. You kids. Yeah. You kids. It's not a joke. You kids are crazy. Wow. That's no, you wouldn't actually throw your used car batteries in the ocean. Okay. It's just funny Thanks. to say. Oh, yeah. Explain in that. It's just, just hilarious. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, moving that on. Brings everybody yeah, really. up. What else you got? <laughs> Let's talk about never retiring, okay? <laughs> well, we okay. We, you know, we have tried to retire. Re yes, Sorry. several yes. times. Sorry. And, and, and Catherine said, "No way, no. you guys are still going to keep yeah. working." And, Sorry. And, oh, the salt mines. Oh, we're boy, back again. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, one of my favorite people, Ben Shapiro, is out on a rant. <laughs> Uh, he, he doesn't want anybody to retire. What did he say? Because this it's time? just too hard to figure out who, what age is the best time to retire. So instead of just figuring that out, never yeah. retire. That's that's his point. Now, John Favreau used to be a speechwriter for Obama, I believe. Uh, he wrote this. He he tweeted this. He said, "I really wish every Republican would run on this platform. It is uh, cut 
four five six, Sam, and uh, this is Ben Shapiro on uh, you know just Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Never, never take those programs seriously. Okay, Ben. All right, let's let's listen to no Ben. No one in the United States view. should be retiring at sixty five years old. Frankly, I think retirement itself is a stupid idea unless you have some sort of health problem. Essentially, twenty to the time mm-hmm. that you are sixty five, which is a forty five year period, pay in. And then you will receive Social Security benefits sufficient to support you and your family, you and your wife or whatever, for like another 20 years. That's crazy talk. That is not fiscally sustainable. 65-year-olds are not old in the United States. They're not. 68-year-olds are not old in the United States. Again, Joe Biden thinks he's not old, and that dude is running for president again, and that dude actually is old, and he's 81. I, I failed to see how a country in which our entire leadership class is 80 plus is telling you that we should have a retirement age of 65. It makes no sense at all. <laughs> so, he sounds like, you know, he, he used to be uh, one of the chipmunks in the sword his voice <laughs> down a little bit, right? <laughs> First of What's all, wrong with him? But slowed his voice down just a little bit. So he, uh, he thinks for some reason that it, it, we don't really need this. Uh, you get this money, you retire, you're supporting your family, maybe still, I am, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and or just your wife, you're reti- in retirement, fine, you're getting this money, you're living easy, you're finally relaxing, you don't have to work anymore, but he doesn't like that it, it, because you're healthy. And you're healthy, and that means mm-hmm. you should be able to work, get right? Get off the I couch mean, and it. get out right, there, exactly. buddy. Right, exactly. At and, 70. And by the way, no one has any health problems. It is a, <laughs> it is just a, a beautiful vision of what life could be like without any health problems. You know, this is this is sad. Ben it is. Be, how old is Ben? How old is he? Is he 40 even? Who he's, knows? I, yeah, I don't I mean, know. I, he seems 40-ish. 40-ish. Yeah. He's, you, you have nothing. Probably, you don't understand anything. He's one of the pseudo intellectuals that uh, magas have latched onto, and a lot of people who uh, may not be a maga, but they think that because he sounds smart, uh, that he should be taken seriously. Yeah, he's forty years old exactly. Actually, so y- you nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, here's the thing. I think if you want to work, you can work as long as you want. If you want to stay active, if you're in good health, uh, you know, work as long as you want. I, I enjoy working. I, I don't want to sit around and just, you know, collect unemployment exactly. or Social Security well, or Medicare. Depends on what your job was. Right. Yes. If, if you're engaged with your job and you enjoy what you're doing and you're healthy enough, keep working. I think it's good to stay active. But, you know, him saying that uh, it's too young for everybody at 65 to retire, I, right. I well, get, he's, he's you know, talking it's about crazy. People who maybe write for a living, do, you know, keep writing because that's not going to tax your body. But there's yeah. a large portion of this country who take out our garbage for yes. us, who do all kinds hard of labor. hard labor. Yes. Oboe players lose their <laughs> embouchure, and eventually what? they have to hang it up. What's I'm just that? saying. <laughs> But that's true. A lot of people have uh, very difficult jobs. Their joints, their muscles, their bodies are you know, starting to break down a little bit uh, over time. And mm-hmm. which president was it that decided we needed to take care of those people? And because, you know, genetics, uh, that has something to do with it as well. It's not just your former job. Right. right. And uh, there's also some, you know, data out there to support uh, different uh, well, right. ages for right. different races. People and people have different ages that they ha- their lifespan basically has been determined. Mm-hmm. And and we're looking at these are the statistics uh, from the ni- uh, 2019 to 2021. Uh, and by the way, it dropped. Life expectancy dropped because of COVID-19. Right. Uh, and we can thank Trump for that. He was on top of that. Okay, for uh, for whites, it was uh, the age is seventy six. That's what your life expectancy is. Now mm-hmm. I think Damn, for women it's like seventy nine, and for men it's seventy four, and Something somewhere like in between that. it's seventy six. Uh, for blacks, it is seventy. Used to be mm-hmm. seventy four. Uh, Hispanics, seventy seven is the life expectancy time, and for Asians, eighty three. <laughs> wow, that's wow. okay. Uh, that's quite up there. And but the worst group is the American Indian, Alaska Native, uh, sixty-five years old. Is that is right? Life expectancy for those individuals. 
So that is what you can expect, and it's a very wide range, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just coming up with what we have right now, the retirement age is, what, 67, something Mm -hmm. like that. If we go with that and give people an option and a choice... But Republicans, they, they think that everybody should have this freedom to make these choices for themselves. But, of course, they're out there advocating no choices at all. Kicking out the chair <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It's so completely opposite of what they seem to be saying normally. Mm-hmm. So they go around and they expose uh, taking everybody's freedom away. So Social Security, no, it's not really that important. Let's just take it away from everybody. That's it. And, yeah, and, and by the way, not. if you paid in for the last 30 years, <laughs> screw you. Too, bad. Screw ya. Too yeah. bad. Yeah. Hey, I want to remind everybody, we are going to be live this Sunday at High Noon Saloon Your for St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be fun there. Where John and Gordy will be there along with three bands. It's going to be a blast. Uh, I know Rocker is going to be there. Oh, and, this uh, is a Max Inc. thing. This is a Max Inc. thing, yeah, and it's this right. Sunday from noon until 4. We'll be there uh, along with Rocker and uh, three bands. Three bands. So join us at High Noon Saloon. High Noon at noon? Sunday, yes. You got it. We're going to be before. celebrating early. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. 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 And I would assume they might have some kind of colored beer. Of some Perhaps, sort, Perhaps some green beer. Colored beer. Class <laughs> acts. Class acts. Yeah. It's going to well, be fun. Looking you know, forward to it. Who knows what they're going to do. You know, the specialty uh, brew pub beer. Yeah. Would they allow a color in it? I would don't they, think that's right. Would they think that be Isn't Guinness from Ireland? Cool? And, or is that um, England? Yeah. Probably England. I Guinness. Think it's Ireland. Yeah. Well, you can't make it green. Yeah. It's black. Yeah. Just saying. I'm not sure. That's my not sure. Yes, you can't okay. do that, but you can you can put it in a lighter beer, some mm-hmm. kind of lager, perhaps uh, <laughs> some ales. We may, we love ales. In you got to wear green on Sunday. So if you're coming to oh, High no, Noon Saloon, no, get in no. there. Why? I'm, Why? I don't know if I'm I have not, anything green. I don't either. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. You got. Come on. I'm wearing blue. Get into it. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Jeez. Oh, look at this. Look at this scooter. Oh my gosh. What is that? It is an LED. Is that a Segway thing? No, no it's, it's a, a regular actual scooter, scooter, but it's got Look, lights he's, he's on got it. Lights. He that, looks like he's oh in a, a, a Tom Cruise movie. Mm. Yeah. Is that, that Tom Cruise? It might be. He's got a flashing light on his backpack, too. Oh, he is Look not going to be hit. I will not be hit by a car. Goes. That is so cool. <laughs> okay. Which way is he heading? I'll, I, I got to try and get him on the State Street cam. He's no, going he's, going the, he's going the other direction. Yep. Yeah. All right. Coming up, uh, 749. Well, he looked short. like he, he came right out of the game Tron. He did. Right? He was Tron. <laughs> Coming up, we've got some tickets to give away in our next hour to a legacy dinner theater in Wisconsin Dells. The Liverpool Legends, the Beatle band, is going to be up there. We've got a pair of tickets in our next hour. Also, a story about hot smoke blanketing L.A. Oh, my God. Wait till you hear oh, this. Oh, can't wait to smell it. Yeah. Radio, WMBX, 92.7 FM at 1580 AM. The capital city, Madison, is waking up. A lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. Uh, yeah, this is more traffic, I think, than the one next to the radio station. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should, it's going to be a nice we day today. Here from it's every day. It's beautiful. I know. It wouldn't be great. It, uh, you, Although they're closed on Mondays, but oh uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's one thing. But well, Tuesday through Friday, that would be fun. How hot did it get yesterday? Like seventy? It got seventy-ish. Yeah. yeah. Today, mid sixties. Okay. It's clear this morning. Some clouds moving in later. Maybe some rain tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Well, you know, right. yesterday they had some hearings, and it didn't turn out well for Robert Hur, and he's the special counsel that uh, took a look at. He interviewed. Joe Biden, and he came out with this report, and he trashed Joe Biden with personal statements <laughs> instead, of, instead of why he was a special counsel in the first place. 
Uh, and he mentioned something that uh, the MAGAs picked up on. They really, they really beat this one to death, and that is that uh, Joe Biden forgot the date of uh, the death of his son, Bo. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it appears as though that isn't the case. <laughs> right. When they actually looked at the uh, transcripts, he, yes. didn't, he didn't really forget that. Uh, he I, was pretty close to it. And here, here's some audio on it. It's cut 500. Sam, uh, let's listen to what happened during those hearings. And I want to give you a chance, since the transcript is out, uh, to correct the record on an important point. Uh, very sadly, uh, your report on page 208 says that Mr. Biden couldn't come up with the date, the year of his son, Beau Biden's death. When in fact, in the transcript, it shows that you asked him the month. And do you know what he said, Mr. Herr? He said, oh God, May 30th. Would you like to correct the record? His memory was pretty firm on the month and the day. Congresswoman, I don't believe that's correct with respect to the transcript, but if you could refer me to a specific page, I'd be happy to look. Uh, <laughs> and my second document to clarify for you, sir, Mr. Herr, uh, from the transcription, uh, page 82, the words are President Biden's. What month did Bo die? Oh, God, May 30th. A searing memory. I ask unanimous consent. Without objection. All right, so he was corrected. Uh, and in fact, he stuck with it, as you could hear. He said, well, no, that, that, is, that isn't true. And of course, she referred back to it again. Right. And he saw it. What page? And, yeah. uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. Hmm. And he didn't. Yeah. yeah. Didn't say what a, what much a after that. Stupid thing to be huh. biting down could, on. Well, and the, and the Republicans were all over him about, well, why didn't you process? You know, how come this didn't uh, go to mm -hmm. court? I mean, how, you know, why aren't you? And he, he, he was very evasive about that. Right. You exactly. Know? Right? Yes, he was. he was. Your, I don't understand what the point you're making there. Well, I'm saying he was getting hammered by both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans. The right. Republicans were not happy with him because he didn't uh, take this further and, uh, you know, Try to charge them with uh, with something. Or holding on to uh, on so, to documents. To the documents. So, because they charged Trump, you know. Yeah. So they should char charge Biden. So he was getting it from the Republicans, and then the Democrats were after him about it the It wasn't uh, intentional. Other the presidents have taken papers like that as well. So it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't intentional. Trump did it intentionally, tried to hide it intentionally, right. shipped them later intentionally, <laughs> even while they were... Lied about course, it. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's even getting more complicated now. Some guy coming out saying, well... <laughs> Yeah, as they were going in to get these, he was shipping papers out, boxes. <laughs> it's it's oh, getting worse and it's worse so and worse. Stupid. You guys are, you know, I don't want to out you in your age, but 80 <laughs> is, these guys, the president's yes. oh, candidates okay. in their 80s, that's, that's the new 70. It's just not that big a deal. You don't have to be 100% 40 years old to be president. Right. I, 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 yeah. I'm not and, remembering and, the date of his son's death. That's just horrifying. I have to but, remind but to myself when my completely... parents died. It was in the last five years, for God's sakes. I have to think about it. Right. right. It's trauma. It's, yes. It's, it's crazy exactly. to have actually said something like this in, in this document, even though it is the opposite of what was quoted right. in his own documents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't even want to think. You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene was on all of this as well, but oh, she Lord. also made a huge mistake uh, uh, in regards to uh, that as well. I, I have this cut 501. This is Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, we've all been questioning his mental capacity, and he had this pen in his hand. I had given it to him as he walked down the aisle, and when I yelled out at him and I said, say her name, Lincoln Riley, he picked up the pen, and he had it right there. It's easy to read, Lincoln, but he said Lincoln Riley. No, you just what? said Lincoln Riley. What you the hell is she Mary, talking she, about? Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, the, the woman who was killed uh, by an immigrant. Uh, she, she, she actually made a mistake <laughs> by describing that name as Lincoln Riley, as you could see the first mention of it in the, that quote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then she corrected it by saying it's Lincoln Riley, and then she criticized Biden for saying Lincoln Riley. Now, she made the mistake herself by calling <laughs> right. this girl Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's kind of complicated. 
<laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, it, it was like a momentary thing that uh, Biden just threw into the speech, by the way. Mm-hmm. And it, it, lost it, was, it was an ad lib. Why, why is she even talking about shouting after the president? Who do you think you are? Right. It, well, shouting it out, uh, you know, with uh, Derek Van Orden also shouting out liar. Yes. Uh, it just, uh, you know, again, these aren't adults. <laughs> These are That's juveniles yes. sitting out there doing their thing, the bully on the playground, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who, who, and who's the Republican who just announced yesterday that he's leaving uh, Congress because he can't take it anymore? He right. just said, that, and he's a Republican, and said, you know, enough. I can't do it. Not do. I'm leaving at the end of the week. Exactly. Hanging it up. Yeah. Yeah. Which What's one was fun? it? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to find that. Yeah. But uh, he just made that. In fact, that was late yesterday. Yes. Uh, yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening. I don't doubt We've got it. the That's story Ken here. Buck. So. There's Ken a, Buck. There's yeah. a GOP Ken and then there's MAG, and they are not the same. And I really, I'm beginning to feel sorry for Republicans. Exactly. I really am. Well, Real Republicans. Could you play uh, 502? Cut 502. This is Ken Buck uh, mentioning why he is leaving uh, the Republican Party completely, just getting out of Congress. And, and I don't need to spend my time here. We've taken impeachment and we've made it a, a social media issue as opposed to a, a constitutional concept. Mike Johnson's a Ability to talk me into staying here is it going to be about as successful as his ability into talking me into unconstitutional impeachments. There you go. He just That's revealed it. that obviously they know this is unconstitutional. They shouldn't be doing any kind of impeachment hearing at all. But still, you know, Ken Buck is leaving. He's walking. He's tired of this whole thing. And uh, I mean, he, he was one of the most partisan individuals that we had in the House. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. John and Gordy, along with Catherine Lake, live at Short Stack Eatery. We've got another hour ahead of us. First up, news, weather, sports. We'll be back with a whole lot more, including why pot smoke is over L.A. (laughs) 